Guys, don't miss out on the latest, the greatest, the newest, the hottest comic books getting ready to hit store shelves very soon. This is my latest FOC video powered by Comic Central. So Comic Central, my local comic shop, provides me with a newsletter each week highlighting some of the hottest books getting ready to come out. So I'm here to share this with you. If you like any of these comic books today, make sure you let your comic book shop know because I think there's some good ones here. So if you guys love daily comic book content and you love this kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with that being said, Let's get started. So this week we're kicking it off with the indies and here we go. It's Spawn issue 350, a big milestone issue once again for Todd McFarlane. Spawn's throne, or I should say Hell's throne has been open for quite a long time. It's been vacant. Who's going to take the throne? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Again, a story 32 years in the making. From what I heard, from this point forward, now Brett Booth is going to be on the artwork here when it comes to Spawn. That's why I'm checking this one out. There's definitely its share of variant covers here. So I want to know in the comments below, are you guys excited for the next issue of Spawn? All right, so let's continue forward here with another, another horror type of comic book. And this is called Helen of Windhorn. This is issue one. So this one is written by Tom King. A uh, very horror-like comic, obviously. And I don't know, it's about this girl by the name Helen Cole, who's called back to her grandfather's enormous and illustrious estate, the Wyndham House. So uh, I guess it's scarred by Cole's ultimately passing and lost in a new strange world. So I don't know what to expect out of this. This is Dark Horse. They tend to you know make scarier books and whatnot but if it's written by tom king man you might want to check this one out same thing decent amount of variants here so yeah something different again pick it up all right next one here we're going to go to cobra commander issue one it's the second printing variant how many of you guys loved cobra commander issue one i loved it i like how it went back to the gi joe movie and it gave you this Huge thing at the end of it that ties, you know, G.I. Joe and Transformers and the whole Energon universe together. Really great stuff, man. So if you haven't read it the first time around, go ahead, check it out the second time. I might buy that variant cover on the left there. That's pretty sick. All right. And then speaking of Cobra Commander, we're going to go move on to Cobra Commander. This is issue two. Again, like I said, issue one was phenomenal. And it looks like in issue two, uh, Cobra Commander is going to be coming across the, uh, the the dreadlocks. Is that what they call it? Dreadnoughts, I should say, with Zartan and all of them. Because that's what the front left cover has there. Uh, and I think that's where the cliffhanger left off too, if I'm not mistaken. I could be completely off there myself, but I get G.I. Joe, Cobra Commander, Duke. Like I'll probably get a little of that stuff mixed up here and there. But again, no matter what, I'm excited for Cobra Commander. So moving on to more independent stuff. This is a book that I might not pick up. This is called Galagatha. <laughs> if I said that right. Motor Mountain. This is issue one. This is from IDW. I tend to stay away from the IDW stuff. I uh, haven't been really digging a lot of their independent stuff. Maybe Turtles. Uh, I'm not even sure what else I read from them at the moment. But uh, you know, this is just something that's there. If you want to try something different, yeah, go for it, right? Now, here's one that's interesting. This is The Fog. This is issue one. So, I remember the movie The Fog. Now, there's this 1980s version where I guess the story takes place 40 years after that 1980 story. I remember watching the movie. I think it's in the 2000s where the people were stuck in the grocery store and stuff like that. I don't know if that was, was it called The Fog or was that a remake of it or whatever it is? Let me know in the comments below if you have that information and if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm very curious to see what this next installment of the series has to offer. I'm definitely checking this one out, man. I, I love that modern day movie. It was pretty cool. So yeah, there it is. There's The Fog. 
All right, and then for the Rick and Morty fans, we got Rick and Morty. This is issue one. This is a new series uh, for them. This is Rick and Morty Finals Week Sherlock Holmes issue one. So listen, I never been a Rick and Morty guy. I never watched it on TV. I never read any of the comic books, but I know there's some hardcore fans out there. So there you go. There you have it. Next, we have Six Fingers. This is issue one. This looks like another uh, creepy type of style of book. It's a mini series. It's not an ongoing. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know in the comments below if you know more about this comic, if this is something that is up your alley. Then we have from Dynamite, we have Elvira meets up, uh, meets HP Lovecraft. So I watched Elvira when I was a kid on TV. And I just liked her because of her boobs. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I have not read a single one of her comic books before. But I do know there is fans of her and liked her character. And the comics have been out for a while. So there you have it. If you love Elvira, hopefully you'll check out this comic book. All right. So now we're going to move on to the Marvel comics, guys. And here we go. We got Ghost Rider Final Vengeance Issue 1. Um, row 1 uh top right is a foil so that cover on the right like i said that's the foil cover here we're gonna be getting introduced to a new ghost rider this has been spoiled already who the ghost rider is in solicits and whatnot but i'm not gonna say who that is just in case you don't know who the person is now benjamin percy wrote ghost rider in the past and it was really good. So I'm definitely going to be giving this new volume a try. Definitely got your share of variants here as well. All right. Now we'll move on to Giant Size Fantastic Four Issue 1. Uh, Imperious Rex. So Namor's in this book. Listen. I read Giant Size Miles Morales issue one, and I was a little bit disappointed with that book as it tied into Gang War a little bit, and then it just showed you some random issue, some reprint of a random story that had to do with Venom. It didn't have like any real significance. I don't know. So I really don't know personally if I'm going to be uh, reading this one either. So it looks like that... This one includes a reprinting of Fantastic Four issue 33. It's a classic issue from Stanley and Jack Kirby featuring betrayal, action, and high drama in the Atlantean style. So there you have it. There's the reprint that it's going to have and then probably a, a, a other random issue also. So let me know in the comments below if you guys are into these giant size books. All right, so now we have Women of Marvel issue one. So it looks like we got all the women of Marvel in a story because that's just what we do now, right? Um, listen, if you're a fan of Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, Psylocke, Jackpot, listen, you got all these guys in this comic book. So you also got Wanda in there. So there you have that. There's a few variants in here too that might be worth picking up. All right, so let's move on to everyone's favorite comic book right now. Amazing Spider-Man, this is issue 44. This is the Gang War conclusion, guys. Uh, you got a couple different variants in here. You got that John Romita Jr. Uh, cover, if you love that one. And then you got that one on the right, which is kind of cool. And then you got the other three on the bottom. What, what's that skateboard guy? What's his name? God, I hate that guy. Why is he on a cover, man? So, yeah, I, you know, listen, the gang war is okay. I've read worse stuff, uh, like that dark web stuff, and it just seems like lately there's been a lot of standing around and nothing really going on. I think that's why it's, you know, decreased my uh, anticipation for this particular conclusion to the event, but hopefully it ends on a high note and there's some ramifications after this uh, gang war stuff. So we'll see. All right. Here was a book that was really good. Uh, this is Avengers Twilight. This is issue three. So obviously we read issue one already. It just came out. Here in issue three, it looks like Ms. Marvel is on here and it says, Off the shores of New York City's the Raft, a government facility full of secrets and danger, can Captain America infiltrate it before the new Iron Man gives him the same gruesome fate as Tony Stark? See, I am so interested to see what happened to the original Iron Man uh, 
before you know twilight actually happened like what happened to him because if you read issue one he was like tony stark was just all dismantled and he was in like this test tube and i feel like tony stark's kid is like gaining intel from like his brain you know i don't know could be something like that but yeah, I'm excited to read this one. There's your variant covers. Obviously, Ms. Marvel's in this one as an older character at this point. All right, now we move on to Cable. This is uh, issue two. So if you guys are a fan of Cable and this series, uh, go ahead, check this one out. You got Cable and Younger Cable working together here. Um, the first issue wasn't really my favorite. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I just felt like this was a book that they kind of just threw in there because they could and put the Fall of X banner on there and deal with it. You know, I don't like these two together. I just feel like, okay, if you're going to do Cable, just do old Cable. I don't need young Cable. I was never a fan of young Cable, but uh, it is what it is at this point. Got a couple of cool covers though, man, for sure. So if you're a variant comic book collector, you might want to check these ones out. All right, so let's move on to Dead X-Men issue two. Um, this current comic book week, uh, Dead X-Men issue one is about to come out. So there's a bunch of X-Men that died. They're rising from the dead. They're trying to protect the other mutants. They're going to die trying to protect them. Will they die again? Will they live? I don't know. We'll see. Which mutants are they? I guess we'll find out this coming week. So if you're interested in this title, yep. Issue 2 is getting ready to come out before you know it. All right, let's move on to uh, Al Ewing's Immortal Thor. At this point, we are on issue 7. And is freaking Thor battling Battle Cat? Like, that's what it looks like. It's like, it looks just like Battle Cat, except he doesn't have his armor, but he's green. He's got the stripes. Yeah, man, it's so weird. I just, for me, I could not get into this book. It was just two way out there, and that's just my personal preference. If you guys like Immortal Thor, that's awesome. Check out these cool variant covers as well. Got one on there, bottom right with Better Ray Bill. All right, so let's move forward to Miles Morales. This is issue 17. Uh, Rabble's back. Uh, she's been working with the Hobgoblin to get her sense of how to control machines 100% again. And Miles has been struggling with his spider sense. This series has been good, but there's a lot of repetitiveness that goes on in the series that Cody Ziegler does. And also, what I, I'm not sure I like it, but like, Miles Morales' spider sense was like on the fritz. He didn't know how to control it. Well, now not only does he know how to control it, now he's able to make not only a venom blast, but he can make this sword. And now he has this venom sense where he can like almost predict things of what's going to happen. Like Cody Ziggler is just like adding powers to him. I don't know. Like, is he evolving like a mutant or a Pokemon or something? Who knows? But this has been the best Miles Morales Spider-Man series in quite some time. And I do like Rabble, the character, and I like her motive as well. All right. So now we move on. We have a uh, Marvel Superhero Secret Wars issue three. So this is a reprinting, a facsimile. You have a main cover uh, and then you have a foil. So I personally have been collecting both because I have every single issue of Secret Wars, the original run, except issue one. So I'm looking to get that or find that very soon. And I want all the facsimiles and then I want all the foils. So I'll have three separate sets. Uh, I think that's just kind of cool. That's just personally me, but I'm letting you guys know that this one's out there. All right, so let's move on now to the resurrection of Magneto. This is issue two. So this book is kind of cool. Al Ewing writes this, and like I said, he likes to write books that are just way out there. So Storm has to go into this crazy adventure uh, to try to get the soul back of Magneto. Wanda created this place between the living and the dead where all mutant souls go. And like I said, Storm's got to go there to retrieve that soul. And uh, the world that Al Ewing created Magneto to go is insane. But the good thing about this book is the artwork. The artwork is absolutely amazing. So I'm looking forward to issue two to see where this one goes. All right, continuing on here, we have Thrawn Alliances. Uh, issue two, I was not a huge fan of this. This is the ad adaptation of Thrawn. Uh, 
listen, like, the first issue was just a lot of standing around, and obviously, Vader and um, Admiral Thrawn have two different point of views on how they see things, and, like, if you want to see the inner workings of these characters, I guess that's kind of cool. I'm going to give the second issue a try um, and see if it picks up a little bit. I'm all for them trying to figure each other out, but I just need something a little bit more, right? So, yeah, I got cool variant cover there. Bottom right side is awesome. All right, so let's move on to White Widow. Um, I didn't know this book was still going on. We're on issue four at this point. Not a fan of it. I like the, uh, what is it, Beach cover on the right side there. I think that one's cool, but... I didn't like the first issue of this after I read it. All right, then we move on to Wolverine issue 44. We're on Sabretooth War Part 4 at this point. So I only read issue 1 uh, or Part 1 at, uh, right now, and I loved it, man. So I want to see how this continues, how these two fight, fight at each other. Um, I think it's something that we haven't seen in quite a while, so I'm glad that they, they have done this. All right, so now we move on to... DC Comics, guys. And now we're on Batman issue 144. We're on the Joker uh, part three, year one storyline. Uh, so I guess we're just going to continue to evolve the Joker and what his first year was like. And hopefully that's a good story. Hopefully you guys are interested in that. And then we move on to uh, Catwoman. This is issue 62. Uh, I love this main cover, man. It's pretty awesome. You got Catwoman who's tied up on this chair looking looking all nice. And then you got some dude getting ready to inject a needle in her. Uh, and it's titled Nine Lives Part 4. Uh, but I love her facial expression, man. Just like, she's like, I can't do shit about this. So I, it looks like, obviously, it's Amanda Waller's behind it, maybe inserting a bomb in her or whatnot. But yeah, really cool stuff there. We got some other nice covers as well. So go ahead and check it out if you guys are interested. All right, so now we move on to another facsimile book, which is kind of cool. We got Green Lantern issue 87. Um, the foil cover is going to be $6.99, and the regular cover is going to be $5 or $4.99. So if you want to get both, go for it. If you want the foil, go for it. Sometimes it just depends on me, like if I'm in person, if the foil, you know, does it for me or not but this is a great comic book to have in your collection if you don't have it at all which i don't i think this is the first john stewart right so yeah i'll definitely buy this one regardless if it's both or one all right now we move on to john constantine hellblazer dead in america issue two this is in the black label side of things not a fan and that's just a personal preference. If you guys love this first issue, totally awesome, man. Glad you enjoy it. I just can't get into Constantine. Just not my thing. I know nothing about him. So every time I try to read a new number one or something, I just find myself like completely lost. All right. Now we go on to the Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, we're on issue five. And it looks like this story, I don't know how long the story goes on for, issue six. I said this in my review, I felt like this story has lost its momentum a little bit, but it's still a really fun story, right? With all these titan creatures facing against your favorite superheroes. We got the Legion of Doom in there. And the last issue that I read was like, I think Aquaman was in there and they had like his squid monster, like going against the one that's in the water. That's pretty cool, man. So if you like this and read this all the way through, continue reading it. I like the variant covers as well. Moving on to Nightwing. We're on issue 111. So where are we on here? Let's, let's read the description. Something's very wrong with Nightwing, and it's starting to catch up to him. Can the world's greatest detective help him figure out what's going on before it's too late? Plus the plague has left 14th century Europe in chaos. As a young man knows, only as the son of Grey hunts the man who killed his father, a story of revenge told in two parts. I just don't know where this book actually is going, right? Um, it's just always something different, every new story arc, but it never really progresses anything that's going on with the character. We still have Heartless out there. What's going on with that guy? I, I don't know, man. Like, I've always read Nightwing. I always say that, oh, I'm going to drop it, but I never drop it because I feel like it's a well-written book with no real with no 
real direction. So I'll probably continue reading it. And there's your three variant covers there. Uh, what's Nightwing doing snow angels in the snow with a bathing suit on? That's weird. All right, let's move on. All right, well, look at this little sexy action going on with Superman here. Superman issue 11, uh, Lex Luthor Revenge Squad Strikes. Superman's been good, man. The most recent issue was him teaming up with Marilyn Moonlight. You know, you learn the little origin story of her here. And uh, and now here, it looks like Lex Luthor's in the mix again. Uh, it's just been a fun story. This variant cover is, is quite interesting. It's like something almost out of a, a porn movie, man. It's like Lois reading a book and he's like, let me take that out of your hands, Lois. And uh, yeah, she's got that sweater on and yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot going on in that cover. I like the bottom left one. Is that one a Bermenho cover right there with crypto? That's pretty awesome too, man. So yeah, Superman overall has been fun. Interesting cover there on that top right. All right, let's move on here. We got Titans issue eight. Um, I don't know, are we continuing on? I guess Beast World is over at this point. Everyone looks happy, you know. I don't see Beast Boy on that main cover. It's like, is he truly dead? I see him on the variant cover as a penguin. And then you got Dick on there with uh, Starfire. Don't know what to expect at this point when it comes to them. Let me see. The Titans are not the same heroes as they were when Beast World began. Can this team hold the world together after everything they've been through? Can these friends unite against strengthening enemies? Hellbent on tearing them apart or will they crumble? So we still don't know anything. Don't know anything that's going on. If you read Titans, it's almost here, guys. Get ready for that next issue. All right, Wonder Woman issue six is next on the list here. So we got Tom King's Wonder Woman. I know a lot of people like the most recent issue of this series. Um, we got the Sorvin in there. We got the Wonder Girls in there. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's been okay. I've said many times that when it comes to um the writing here i just feel like it's i don't know it just feels long-winded so there you have it guys there are some of the books that are getting ready to come out it's a quite lengthy list hopefully you found this video informative and very helpful and all that kinds of crap so if you guys love this content yeah i'll leave you more content right here to check out and of course guys have a wonderful weekend support the local comic shops keep buying keep collecting but always remember Read your comics. Guys, take care. Thank you so much.